Many years ago, my father was a metal sculptor. Before he died, he made a floor lamp base out of steel, very organic form, and uh, uh, I inherited it, and it never had a decent shade. He had just put a, a fabric shade on that. He got a Target or Kmart or somewhere like that, and, um, and nobody ever really liked the shade, but although it was a really cool lamp, floor lamp. So um, my girlfriend uh, has been on me to make a shade that would be appropriate for a steel floor lamp and uh, with an organic shape. And she didn't want a fabric uh, shade or a styrene shade from Walmart or, or even a high-end store. She just didn't want that. So um, so I decided to put this together. This is a, a steel lamp shade, kind of in the traditional form. This is obviously a steel, steel sheet I bought. It's a scrap or a cutoff. Um, you can see there's very fine holes on here. and. Uh, Typically what this is used for is um, like a screen for a security door and um, because it was a cutoff I bought it um, as scrap at Industrial Metal Supply here in Tucson. I think it was about a buck seventy a pound, dollar seventy a pound. So the whole sheet um, which is about 36 by um, maybe 42 probably cost me about four dollars. So um, it's very easy to cut and um, and the shape into, into pieces bends very easily. So anyways, um, I got this pattern that I downloaded and uh, it's kind of a typical pattern for a, a shade that's um, tapered like this. This is the kind of shade I want. And uh, this is the pattern that we would use. And basically what you do is you, it's two curves um, that are drawn from the same axis point and uh, the kind of the important thing here is that this outer one, that's going to be the circumference of the, the bottom here. And the difference between those two, that's going to be the height of the lampshade, as you can see here. So you have to experiment a little bit, especially with this circumference, um, because the, um, and the circumference in relationship to the uh, circumference of the top. So um, it takes a little bit of experimenting. So one thing you may want to do is just do it on paper first just to see um, what it's going to look like on if, you, if it has to fit on a particular lamp. Anyways, what I did to draw my curves here was I just took a piece of cardboard, corrugated, and at the uh, axis I held up, I put some holes in here and I, I uh, put a pen in there. You could use a pin or anything and then use the Sharpie and then drew along that line. And then the same thing here, as far as I wanted to go, and then just use the ruler to make this line here. Okay, for cutting, you could use snips like this. It's probably the least expensive way to do it. It's uh, kind of time consuming though. And for doing curves, it's a little bit harder. What I'm gonna do is use these, this, these electric snippers. I got this from Harbor Freight. One of the important things is to be as accurate as you can when cutting this because you don't want to have to trim it later. It's a lot more difficult to trim it later than it is to get it right the first time. Here's our finished piece. It's going to need a little bit of trimming and touching up. Okay, after you have the piece cut out, you got the edges trimmed to where you want it. We have to roll it over and we're going to drill some holes in it to hold it together. But to do that, to hold it while we're drilling and handling it, what we're going to do is just clamp it. And I'm just using old vice grips. You could just you could use spring clamps or anything that would hold it. Same thing here. And you see it's bending it a little bit there. That's okay. That'll work out later. The important thing is we want this 
to be consistent. So if it's a half inch down there, it should be roughly a half inch at the top. Then we clamp it. We're going to use 316 hardware. This is called, uh, these are called 632 screws because that's the thread size. Um, it's about a 316 inch and uh, with washer on both sides and a lock washer and a nut. Now since we can't clamp this in the middle, we're going to put this, the screw in. We're going to put three of them in, one on each end and then one in the middle. Since we can't clamp it in the middle, we're going to do the top and the bottom first and then the middle one, which will be a little bit more difficult, but we'll do that last. So let's have my, my drill set up with the 316th drill. Okay, then we put our screw with the washer on that side. And then on the inside, we put a washer, black washer. And a nut. Okay. Once again, we put the screw, the flat washer, through the hole on the inside. Put a flat washer. Lock and nut. Okay, now you can see it's bulging out here. So what we need to do is get this as flat as possible without crushing the shade. Again, once we get the drill set. Remember, even on paper or cloth lampshades, there's always a seam, and there's really no way you can get around it, having a seam in the lampshade somewhere. Typically, this is put in the back, you know, the part that's least uh, noticeable, but uh, a lot of people like the, you know, industrial look of the hardware, too. So, I mean, you could put more, you could put rivets in there, um, you know, there's other things you could do to, to um, uh, you know, if you want to dress it up a little bit more. So, okay, and that's it. Now, if it's not, if it's out of round, again, you gently work it. Okay, I cleaned up the lampshade, and um, I actually used a angle grinder with a flap disc on it. And uh, to clean up the top and uh, and the edges, and just take a little bit of the uh, sharpness out of it, and just clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more even. And um, this could also put a pattern in here if you want to get. Okay, I also made what would be called the spider. Um, typically, the spider has three legs or four legs, but because. Um, this is a custom piece. We have to make our own. Now you could actually buy a spider at um, uh, Michael's or a place that sells lampshade supplies and modify it. But um, actually, I think there'll be more work than just making your own if you have access to, you know, some uh, simple hand tools. This is a piece of three-quarter inch by one sixteenth inch scrap metal. It's just steel, um, and. Uh, it's um, cut and bent to fit inside the lampshade. Now, uh, it takes a little bit of work to get these angles to fit inside there because how this is going to go is like this, and it's going to support the lamp. So when the harp of the lamp goes through here, this will support the total weight of the lampshade. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit tricky to get these angles. You have to fuss around a little bit with them. How I did it was I just put it in a vise and just kept bending it back and forth and testing it till it fit. Now, how I like to put this in is so that it's at right angles to the back, because this will be the back where the, um, the screws come in. The uh, way to, that I put this in is basically just hold it in there so that it's at right angles. And then um, 
make sure that it's level. And this might be lower. Actually, this is about as high as you can go in there. It could be lower if it were a longer piece. I want this up as high as possible because the lamp that it's going on is a, has a very long harp. So I just hold it on there where it's going to go. And I've pre-drilled the holes on the bracket, so I just look through and mark where the holes are. And drill those holes. We put our spider in. The same hardware that we used on the back. You want to get this tight so it doesn't loosen up, you know, in six months or a year and it's on the lampshade. So that's it. And like I say, you can fuss with this thing for hours and, you know, straighten it and, you know, push and pull and all that. But um, the idea is to get it as close as you can. And once you have it on the lamp, nobody's going to know. Thank you.